I know, it, I know it might seem a little bit unusual that I chose Left 4 Dead 2 as my game of choice when having to give a lecture on procedurally generated content because it's not really the sort of game that comes to mind when you think of games that are procedural, but there actually is a lot of stuff in Left 4 Dead 2 other than just the AI director, which I, I know that's probably the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, the AI director is going to be a large part of this presentation, but there's actually a lot of little things that Left 4 Dead does to make sure that every gameplay, uh, every playthrough is different. And just in case, before we go into that, I want to make sure that everybody knows the gameplay in case someone has never played Left 4 Dead 2 before. Left 4 Dead 2 is a game where four players assume the role of survivors in a zombie apocalypse. They will be navigating a series of locales and being constantly beset upon by hordes of zombies, and their goal is to reach the next safe house and progress throughout the game. Some of, the, some of the minor procedurally generated systems, the first one and the most visible one is the item spawns. As the players go throughout the map, they will see there will, there will be items that they can collect. There'll be weapons, there'll be throwables, there'll be health items. And every time you play these games, these items will be different. The way that the game sets these up, the map creator chooses a bunch of locations along the map that are potential item spawns. They will not all be item spawns. And he sets a range of things that are allowed to spawn in that spot. He might say, only tier two weapons can spawn here, or only throwables can spawn here. And then, furthermore, the game randomly chooses one of the items in that pool to be the thing that spawns. So every time you play the game, you could have very different item spawns just from ju in just two different playthroughs, which really changes the gameplay. Um, and I should note that the AI director, it, it, it's mostly entirely random, but the AI director does reserve the right to change some of these factors up if it detects that it would make for a better game. One of the easiest ones to see is when the players are playing on an easier difficulty. If it's an easy difficulty and everyone's really low on health, then the AI director will upgrade findable health items so that you find better health items than you would if you were playing on a harder difficulty. Another procedurally generated system is that specific parts of maps are randomized in what pathways are available. When you go through this cemetery, for example, in the parish, you may see that certain fences are, are either, you're either missing or present, and certain crypts will be deleted so that you have to navigate the cemetery in a different route than you might normally take. And then there are also a couple more systems that are uh, specific to certain campaigns. The rainstorms are specific to a campaign called Hard Rain, but they also do briefly appear in the passing campaign. Uh, but the Hard Rain campaign uh, is t takes place during uh, a really stormy night. And so while you are navigating the, the sugar fields and the, sh the abandoned sugar factory in Hard Rain, you will randomly have uh, monsoons that build up and just kill visibility. And you don't know when those are going to, to, going to hit you. Uh, likewise, in any campaign where you're traveling somewhere where there are cars, uh, there will be alarmed cars. There's a bunch of cars that might be alarmed cars, but the game will only choose one in each area to be the alarmed car for that round, and you're not sure which car it's going to be. So those are a couple of minor systems. Another one that's a, a little bit bigger is the common infected generator. Uh, this is how the game determines what the regular, regular zombies are going to look like. And they basically stitch together these zombies using parts of textures from very large pools. Uh, these textures involve what, the head, what parts of the head look like, what parts of the outfits look like, and the grime and blood covering the zombies. And this, this leads to a bunch of different uh, available different models for zombies. And then those models, the clothing, will have a variable color tint using a random multiplication of RGB values. And all of this combines to create over 24,000 different variations of the common infected. You should not see two common infected who look exactly the same in a single playthrough of a map. And now let's get on to the AI director, the really, really famous one. The AI director is a dynamic system that assures every playthrough is a unique experience. Uh, he controls the item spawns and the loot pickups. He controls the spawning of enemies and what type those enemies are. He also, this, this is one that not a lot of people know, he keeps track of each player's emotional and physical state and factors that in when making decisions on what spawns where. Uh, he knows what players are currently stressed out because they're low on health or they've currently been pinned by a special infected and he will tailor his strategy. He'll either be more punishing or more forgiving. It usually depends on what difficulty people are playing on. The way the AI director does this, his primary thing is the navigation mesh. The navigation mesh basically divides the map up into a series of squares. It's the same one that the NPC characters use to navigate the mesh. It, uh, tracks, it tracks three types of spaces. It tracks what space the players have already seen, 
what space the players can currently see, and what space the players have not seen. Uh, this mostly matters for zombie spawns because the player, the AI director will only spawn zombies somewhere the players can't see. But this also matters for item spawns because anywhere, any item spawn the players have not seen, the AI director reserves the right to change. This most frequently happens when upgrading something, a, a weak health item like pain pills into a strong item like health kits if the players are struggling on a lower difficulty. Uh, in addition, the AI director has mentally divided the map up. That, that's what this map is right here. This is actually the, this is the subway map from No Mercy and the players start here and the uh, AI director uses this series of arrows as kind of mental shorthand for progress throughout the map. So if the survivors are all in this square, then the AI director can reasonably assume that this square is progress and this square is backward progress. And he, the AI director mostly uses this for two reasons. One, if the players backtrack a lot, the AI director will punish them by spawning a horde. Two, certain special infected are more or less powerful depending on if they spawn before or after the survivors, and the AI director will take that into account when spawning them. The, the two examples I like to use, the boomer is a very slow, uh, infected who would struggle if he spawns behind the survivors so the AI director will almost always spawn a boomer ahead of them and then on the opposite side the smoker is a long-range sniping zombie and so he is usually spawned either behind the survivors or above the survivors and that's what the AI director uses flow distance for. The other th main thing the AI director uses for spawning is called the active area set. It's a big circle around the survivors that tells the AI director what part of the map is currently, what, where, where, what mark can, is something happening and this is where I should spawn zombies because this is where the players are right now. Um, if the survivors get split up, the active area set can also be split up, but usually the survivors are all in one place. And what happens is if the survivors move throughout the map and leave living zombies behind them just because they didn't notice them or the zombie was never triggered and is locked in a closet, the AI director can slay those zombies to open up those slots to spawn new active zombies in the active area set. The other thing that the active area set does is controls where special infected will spawn. Special infected can only spawn in the active area set and only in spots that are not currently visible by the players. And what this does is it allows for uh, this quote, hundreds of enemies using a small set of reused entities. It means that they don't have to spend much processing power. They don't have to worry about the entire map. They can basically deactivate parts of the map until the, player, the, until the players are in a certain area, whereupon that area becomes active and zombies and stuff will actually happen there. And this, in, this entire setup is called structured unpredictability, or that's what, that's what Valve likes to call it. It's neither purely random nor deterministically uniform. Uh, in addition, the AI director has two phases. I don't know if phases is the right word, but basically all the time the AI director will be building up this intensity meter. And as the intensity meter builds, he'll get more and more um, aggressive and will spawn more zombies until he hits a certain level and then he, he segues back into relax mode. And uh, relax mode will happen uh, after a crescendo where a, like a horde of zombies is spawned or until a boss zombie is spawned. And this, uh, I mean, this is that flow that we keep learning about in class. It's dr the dramatic game pacing. And then this is, this is the stress meter I talked about before. In this little example, uh, it looks like Bill is incredibly stressed. Maybe he's very far away from his teammates. Maybe he's very low on health. Maybe he's pinned by a special infected. Maybe combinations of the others. The other three seem to be doing okay. And Bill will actually hear different music uh, from the other three, as will the other three. The music is entirely client side. That is the final procedurally generated system I wanted to talk about. It's client side, it's multi track, and it's completely unique to each player. And I have a quote about the music, but it actually does a really good job describing all of the systems of procedural generation in this game. By designing the music and rule sets to increase the probability of beautiful happenstance and to minimize the probability of inappropriate mistakes, we end up with the highest percentage of musical events working as planned, a nice mid percentage of acceptably artful mistakes, and very few actual poor moments. That was from the developer commentary, one of the three sources. Um, I, I, I cite the other sources on the pages I use them, but if, in case you're interested in reading more, I posted this entire, p this entire PowerPoint in the Slack channel if you'd like to look up more of it. I, I find this game really fascinating, and I like teaching people about it. So uh, let me know after class if you have any questions or if you're looking for someone to play with. Uh, thank you very much for listening.